What's up everyone, Willy Apple here, and yesterday, Apple has released macOS Ventura Beta 8 to developers, and also today they released it to public beta testers. In this video, I'll be showing you what is new in macOS Ventura Beta 8. So if we were to take a look at the size right here, it, I just needed 1.61 gigabytes to update from Beta 7 on my M1 MacBook Air. And we got a few things to talk about today. If we were to take a look at the build number right here inside of settings, general, and about, we see that the build number here is 22A5352E. So we have an E at the end of the build number and before we had an F, which means it is one step up to being closer. And if you're wondering how many builds apart it is from, it is 10. And if you'd like to be notified whenever there's a new macOS or iOS update, just join the Discord server and toggle the update pane. Alright, so before in settings, if we were to take a look at this update, we we did not have a family icon in last beta. But in this beta, the family icon has returned, but it's still pixelated like it was in beta 6. I've actually been having a few issues with the family icon in this beta. So sometimes we would revert back, and upon just waiting a little bit, it would go back to having a family right there. If we were to take a look at all the build numbers for beta 7 of the apps, and to take a look at beta 8 right here, we see that majority of the apps had a little update right here. So unfortunately, we did not get a clock update like we wanted to, to see if we could eventually get the issue fixed where alarms would not ring in the morning. Oh yeah, in the last beta, I did eventually have issues with the alarms. But in this beta, I have woken up to my Mac ringing along with all my other Apple devices. Since I'm not going to remove the Apple devices from the alarm until the issue is completely fixed. So clock still remains at build 62. Hopefully that gets updated in the next beta. It has remained at build 62 for the past couple of betas, so I kind of doubt that they're gonna update it, but hopefully they do update it. We got a new shortcut, so if we were to go into other and then shortcuts right here, and then create a new shortcut, we now have get current focus. So right here, if we drag it in, it would get the current focus and we could do an if statement if we wanted to. If focus was on personal, then do this. If not, disturb. If it isn't on, then we could do something else. I was just to show you right here, this is what it is. This is kind of similar to the iOS lock screens that we got where we can link them to a focus. Inside of photos, if we go into settings right here, we now have the share photo library back. So in the previous beta, this got removed and now it is back. If we were to press get started, it would guide us through the process of adding shared photo library. Also, we, another change in system settings, we were going to settings, general, and then sharing right here. We see that there are new buttons right here. They seem kind of useless since there's a toggle right here that tells you if they're on in my opinion. If I were to just turn on Bluetooth sharing and enter my password on, it also has a toggle right there. Well, I kind of want this reverted to be honest, since it seems pretty useless just having toggles right there. And I'm hoping for a new Ventura screensaver like we got with Monterey. Not sure, 100% sure when we got the Monterey screensaver last year, but it was pretty late in the beta stages, so hopefully in the next beta, we'll get a Ventura screensaver. I'm excited to see what they're gonna do there. Now I'm gonna run a quick Geekbench test to see how well macOS Ventura Beta 8 is compared to beta 7. Mac OS Ventura beta 8, we got a 1752 on the single core and a 7736 on the multi-core. Now comparing that to beta 7, we got a 1760 on the single core, so it is 8 lower right there, and 77, 78 on the multi-core, which is about 40 lower right there. So it is a little bit lower, but it is still better than Mac OS Monterey. Now Geekbench doesn't usually tell the full story right here, it should be an update to stay away from if these numbers are a lot lower compared to beta 7. If we were to take a look at the feedback app right here and go to macOS right here, we have no resolved issues right here, it just seems copied and pasted from beta 7 right here. We do have one new known issue right here and this is related to memory allocation, it's the same exact one that we got in 16.1 beta 2. This seems very major, but it doesn't seem to be affecting iOS for me. iOS has been being pretty responsive for me, and same with macOS. And let's also talk about battery life right here. So this is my battery chart right here. As you can see, it stays right here. School starts, I did not use it today a whole lot, as you can see right here. And this is when I started recording this video. So battery life seems to be pretty good in macOS Ventura beta 8, and hopefully it keeps improving on. I also want to briefly talk about my experience 
the Beta 7. The Beta 7 was pretty good. I actually found myself using Ventura more than macOS Monterey. So if we were to take a look at my startup disks right here, you see I have macOS Monterey right here, and it's actually my primary partition right here. I have Ventura as a secondary partition just because I had an issue back in Beta 5, so I eventually decided to dual boot on my Mac, but I'm still installing primary betas on my iPhone and iPad for now. Now, settings app seems to still be a little bit laggy, especially with this battery section right here. If you saw earlier, it took a little bit to load all of this stuff. And no, we did not get clean energy charging right here. Kind of wish we did, to be honest. It would make sense that the Macs and iPads also get it, since the iPhones did get it. That is all I really have to say about macOS Ventura Beta 8. Overall, pretty good update. So thanks for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. Share it with your friends. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye! <laughs>